Yep, you're looking at that correctly. I traded in my C7 VET for this 2015 M4. Um, kind of a weird move, but uh, really happy with my decision. It was more of a, I guess, financial move than anything. As you guys know, the uh, car market is really crazy right now. And my trade-in for the Corvette, they were willing to give me more than what I paid for the car in the first place. So it was kind of a no-brainer to um, step up to another like hiring car that was more expensive and actually lowered my monthly payments by 100 bucks a month. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this car is pretty solidly built. If you ever driven one of these or even just a four series in general, um, I mean, these newer BMWs are pretty awesome. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is probably get the front bumper um, protected with the 3M uh, clear bra. And I think it has like a hood section too. And then um, I'm taking this car to Vader Solutions in Mesa, run by Omar. And he's gonna hook me up with getting the crank hub fixed on this. Uh, I know this is a major issue. Sometimes the crank hubs can spin because they're not one piece and the timing gets messed up and the engine explodes. So definitely don't want that happening. This car only has 30,000 miles on it, which is really nice. And I want to keep it nice and probably for a long time. So it, it's a worthy investment to get that crank hub fix. And then right away, I'm probably going to do down pipes, um, the upgrade the air to water intercooler and then run like a probably like MHD stage two or um, some sort of E85 tune. Um, so I'll probably have some more videos coming up on this. I'm not really trying to drive it right now because the front bumper is really pristine on this car and I want to get that wrap, that clear bra on there first um, before I really start driving it. Um, and obviously get that crank up done before I really start beating on the car, so. Um, I'm definitely going to have some upcoming episodes uh, specifically covering this car, but uh, yeah, it's really cool. So carbon fiber roof, uh, no sunroof. Um, it does have the carbon ceramic brake option, which has these massive rotors. And this, <laughs> this caliper is like literally the size of my hand. It's, it's massive. Um, a lot of stopping power. Um, these motors are really reliable actually, these S55s once you do the crank hubs and can make a stupid amount of power on stock turbo. So I'm really excited to, uh, to get on that. Um, the other thing, I bought a tuning cable, um, the E-neck cable for these, pretty cheap. Um, I'm gonna be actually probably doing an episode on how to code these cars. Um, because you can actually do uh, a GTS slash CS club sport flash on these uh, base models. Um, and it completely changes the differential transmission and engine um, coding and makes everything a little bit more aggressive and refined and really wakes up these cars apparently. So um, coding is coming first. Um, and then, yeah, just gonna kind of build the car as I go. So Remy, what are we working on today, buddy? So we are gonna continue uh, today with the gold panning and uh, prospecting situation. Things have escalated quite a bit here. Um, so I'll kind of explain what's going on. Um, I went into the wash last episode. I gathered some pay dirt from some um, you know black sand areas, and it looked really promising. I ended up panning it out. Um, so if you're familiar with gold panning, it's just you know, separating the weight of different rocks, and then you end up with gold in the bottom of your pan. Um, I'm sure you've seen that on like Gold Brush and all kinds of other show shows, but. Um, I did find a lot of uh, flower gold, some really, really tiny pieces of gold. So the only way to get that out, and I talked to a prospecting store in Mesa, is I said you need to run a sluice box 
and you need to run this blue bowl thing, which I'm gonna be setting up as well. So um, first thing is, to, in, in this episode, I'm gonna be uh, building my own sluice box. Um, so I have this uh, kind of pre-built sluice um, and these riffles are designed to capture really fine gold. So you would run your pay dirt over this and it, these little riffles here will capture um, the gold hopefully if you set it up correctly. So the part that I actually have to build are the legs to prop this sluice up and then I built this kind of like quarter inch classifier where it's like a hopper almost. You're gonna basically load in the pay dirt into this part and it's gonna sit like this and all the bigger rocks will kind of slide down that and fall off the end while the smaller than quarter inch stuff will fall through this chicken wire here and go through the actual sluice. Um, the other thing you need is constant water running through here. So as you can see there, I got some PVC tube and I'm gonna be running um, a little kind of like angled piece and it's gonna have holes drilled in this and it's gonna run water and wash away the rock. And hopefully we'll catch some gold. All right, so right now I'm kind of just measuring out um, how tall my front legs have to be. So all the water is actually gonna wash into this bucket and what it's gonna happen is it's gonna spill over into this bigger bucket and my pump will be in the actual bigger bucket so I don't get like a bunch of sand and grit back in the pump and it's recirculating that into the, the wash plant here. So um, I'm gonna kinda do a quick measurement. Uh, let's call that 17 inches. So I'm gonna build two front legs right now. All right, so we got the bottom legs on. Not the sturdiest thing in the world, but I think once I get the back on, it'll be pretty good. The sluice itself has to be between like seven and 10 degrees. I'm gonna make some little uh, notches on this to kind of make it adjustable with my wing nuts here so I can adjust the tilt on the back, but I just kind of want to get a general idea so right about there is uh, the correct sluice angle because I need to make my uh, my rears that are the adjustment. This is a side that's gonna have a bunch of adjustment holes on it so I can kind of change the angle as I need to. So I know I kind of fast forward over some of the steps because it's kind of rinse and repeat, but this is what the final product looks like. So essentially you load in the material up here. Um, it'll come down into here, fall through this quarter inch uh, chicken wire, and then it'll come down into the sluice and the water is actually fed up here too. That's the next step I'm gonna build with all the PVC pipe, but um, it's a little bit unstable with these legs. Um, I think I'm gonna probably end up putting some wood supports like in between, see if that helps a little bit, but I think for now I'm gonna move on to building the, the PVC uh, water supply. I added some blocks of wood um, for the legs I think it turned out pretty good. It's it's a lot more stable now. Um, next thing I need to do is start adding my water system. So it's basically gonna sit something like this. And then this is gonna be your spray bars. So when you start loading in dirt, it'll break up all the bigger rocks and smaller rocks and hopefully the gold flows down to this great. Um, I am missing a T-piece, so I have to run back to the store and grab that, but I'm gonna have this inline valve to control the water flow to turn it up or down. 
And then this is just sort of like a standard hose connection to the PVC pipe. Um, so I can just hook up a hose or I can hook up the recirculation pump that's coming. All right, so we're gonna try this baby out for the first time. Be working pretty good there's quite a bit of water that comes off of this end though so i might have to switch up the angle a little bit but i think we're looking pretty good here And I don't think there's any gold left, but we're just going to run it through this machine first just to see how it runs. Anything here? <clears throat> Just catching a whole lot of rock, that's for sure. Like I said, I don't think there's any left in here because I did pan it out, but it might be. All right, let's just pan this out quick to see if we have anything in here. So I have to be careful because you don't want this falling into your other pan. Okay. Get a little bit of water in this pan. All right, let's do a quick test of this one. got It's 
kind of hard to tell, but there might be some fine, fine gold in there. Seeing the black sand getting separated. Like I said, I've already panned all this, so I think I got most of it out. I just want to see if this machine can capture anything that I couldn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when I swirled it, I see it was seeing a little streak. That's probably really hard to see on camera, but it's, it's, it's a little bit right there. Yeah, I'm just seeing some super fine stuff, so it's cool that this is catching that, you know. Um, so next I'm going to hook up the water system, and then um, I'll show you guys the full machine running in the water, actually recirculating. I was just running it from the hose this time, but it seems to be working. Um, I need to check my angles and everything to make sure it's not falling through or falling down the backside correctly so getting there one step at a time thanks for watching